What's going on, gang? Happy Gravy Day. It's Pass the Gravy, episode 484, and it's Alex, Pat, and Bobby Jokes back at it again. And if you're listening to this a little bit earlier, that's because we're recording it a day earlier because we have some scheduling that we had to move around. But if you're just listening to it when you normally listen to it, then nothing's different. So don't worry about it. Just just be like, wow, this is a treat. Thank you. Thank us for for putting it out early, even though like you might be listening to it like on Friday, if you normally listen to it on Fridays, just know that we did more work today or more work this week, earlier work. This yeah. Week. It was different. Okay. It was different. Now we're all thrown off. All right. Um, we do start off normally with the pre-com segment before we get in pre-com or the comeback kid segment. Um, anybody have any ideas, thoughts, business pitches that they wanted to throw out to the gang to start us off today? Not so much a business pitch. Um, it's more of just like a gripe. And it's not All really right. a not cool. It's it's just a gripe. So anybody that has worked in the service industry knows at some point or another, you got to change out a CO2 tank, something like that. And it gets these big metal like uh, nut on the end of it. And then it just kind of has this, it's a hexagon. And then there's this piece of metal that always just stays attached to it too, that perfectly fits over it. And that's how you tighten it and loosen it. Of I course. don't like that. There's got to be a wetter, better way. Literally every single time I do it, can you see? Yeah. Little, Undid it. Boo -boo. Un, yeah. Un, un, like you have to hold it so it doesn't move, but then you're fucking pulling it backwards right at you to try and lose. Bam. Hit myself in the knuckle. Skin to my knuckle. Every single fucking time. I've been doing this for nine years. I've been replacing these things. And every time I somehow cut myself. And I yeah, I get it. like a, a ratchet, one of those things. So you can just not really have to think about it. You, you never think about it until you go to replace it. And you're like, oh, this is how that happened. And then like I should, ours, yeah. ours is like underneath the counter behind the thing. So like I have to get down underneath there and do it. It's like I, once I'm down, I'm not going to get back up. You should get like a magnetic one and just kind of hang it there. So then when you're down there, you're like, oh, this is convenient. <laughs> Which is the sound that a wrench makes. It's actually a really good idea. Ratchet, a ratchet to make that magnetic ratchets. There was a guy that came to work on my AC yesterday, and he had like a magnetic flashlight, and he stuck it to it, and it was pointing down. And I was like, "Oh, that's a really good idea." That's pretty sick. Yeah, magnetic so ratchet that idea. All right, because I know well, you. Exists. You helped me out there. That that's that's a great idea. Or just get a magnet and then you can stick stuff to it. So that's how yeah. You and then leave it down there. All right. That's a good idea. Magnets. Also, uh just just fall drinks and hot drinks. I love it. It's back. I had a hot toddy today. So it was cold. What exactly is a hot like it's just booze, I thought. Hot water, whiskey, lemon, honey. And then like, you know. I'll put like a lemon peel or a cinnamon stick in it to class. That's it always up. what it is. I thought it was literally just like you call it a hottie toddy because you were like, I got me, got me a toddy. No, I it's just, just I have an alcoholic drink in my hand. No, you're just heating up whiskey and putting lemon and honey with it because people will drink when they feel sick. So you get a little honey in there to soothe the throat. And that's your like whiskey in there to you make you feel take. better. Hot. Yeah. So I do what a you normally drink one. with lemon and heat it. So, okay. Yeah. I, I, I have a lot of deconstructed hot toddies just without the uh, honey, lemon, or water. In my house, it's actually kind of become martini season because mm. um, Emma and I got martini glasses just for wedding gifts, and we finally started opening some stuff that we got that, like, we haven't really made room for yet. And so, like, we're, we've got martini glasses in the house now. And so Emma was like, can we make a martini? I was like, I do want that. And Espresso it's martinis? Um, no, just regular vodka martinis. And um, you should go gin. It's a fun way to just be like, I'm just going to drink a lot of vodka right now. But it's classy. That's, right. It's like, but I'm not an alcoholic. Like, I'm not just like this guy. He didn't just take six shots of vodka. He poured it in a giant glass and mixed it with a couple, like, like, like there's olives in it. 
Because Emil even put the olives on a little toothpick. Very of course, classy. you got to. A little Very olive classy. juice in there as well. Yeah. Yeah, that and, uh, well, I mean, I get to drink all the time at work under the guise Ooh, of. Ooh, that was, I'm, that was Darlin right there. That was a, that was a classic darling right there um not quite a marlin although the vibes were very high on that i'm just talking baseball here we're talking baseball folks sorry about that i'm watching the yankees uh guardians game five it's probably over anyways it's not gonna matter guardians are gonna come back and win so i don't know why i'm even investing my time in the yankees oh shit i didn't realize it was a three run damn it um yeah but i also I, I i was looking up fall drinks this morning too so then i looked up another one that i made it was actually pretty fucking good it was uh White rum, pomegranate juice, pear juice, and lime, and a little bit of simple syrup. And I gotta say, I made a really goddamn good cocktail. Is see, like the recipe that I found online, it was like, and then top it with ginger ale. I got all the ingredients, I shook them together, I poured it in the glass. The glass was literally filled all the way up to the brim. I was like, whoever came up with how much out liquid is going into this drink and then said top it with ginger ale has no idea what the fuck they're doing. I do hate that when you try and follow a recipe and you like a drink recipe specifically, you're like, but there's, that's only like a quarter of my cup. My cup is oh, bigger dude, than that. And you're like, this, I need to make it again. And then you're like, now I'm really drunk because I'm having to make a double. This is your fault. Well, also they, whoever made it was an idiot. It's like all of them. It was like one and a half ounces, white rum, half ounce lime, two ounces of pear, five ounces of pomegranate juice and i was like that's supposed to be a 0.5 there's no way uh now when once i looked at the color of it from their picture yeah i'm guessing they did use five ounces but they probably also made two or three drinks out of it because theirs was purple mine was not but mine was fucking way more delicious than their bullshit we but, should uh, just start tweeting out recipes of just like Mm -hmm. random numbers like uh 1.7 uh oh, ounces no, of olive juice uh two ounces of that's a lot of olive juice. of vodka and one and a half ounces of simple syrup and then just like call it like a random name like this is a fun fall drink to try it's called a rainy susan and people be like oh i'll try that that tasted terrible like yeah i don't know we just made it up on the spot yeah, I want to make a uh, I'm going to have the bartender come up with a uh, hot chocolate with Stoli vanilla in it. So it's good vanilla vodka in a hot chocolate. That's going to be fucking delicious. That does. That does sound tight. People want hot drinks to warm their bellies while it's cool. They outside. do. They really Which do. Is the hot toddy was great. A little apple cider with some booze in it. Nothing wrong with that. There you go. The rum punch. A little fall. A little fall drink season is upon us. Everything pumpkin. Most pumpkin things. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I was just talking about baseball because I, I do have baseball on, but I've decided um, it kind of defeats what I was about to say, but I don't care about baseball anymore. I'm over baseball. Um, I've checked out okay. emotionally okay. from baseball. I, I went to see the Black Keys on Saturday night and had the Yankees on, on my phone and they just made me mad because they lost and i was like you know what i'm not gonna let this ruin my fun time i'm i'm having with my friends so i just turned it off and i didn't think about it except except i did think about it so then I was did they like, just you know pulled what? their pitcher doesn't matter game's over anyways guardians are gonna win yankees have no chance so like i was like just i'm counting them out i don't care anymore like they're gonna lose so i'm just gonna i'm not even gonna think about it like the giants won on sunday the next day and so i was like well, Yankees play tonight. Ha, ha, I'm not even going to fucking turn this shit on. And I just had the ESPN thing up where it just was updating me on the score. So I was like, I'm not going to watch it and just like watch them toy with my emotions. I'll just like, huh, I'm going to play Xbox. I'm going to have the Sunday night football game on my, my computer. I'm just going to kind of check the score. And it was lovely. It was amazing. I was like, you're not going to ruin my, my Giants victory day with your dumb shit, Yankees. And so I've just checked out. Like, I don't think they're going to win. I've already put a futures on the Astros to win. I've already like tonight I, I've bet on the guardians. I'm just, I'm just cashing in on the Yankees, not winning shit now. Okay. I don't care. I'm not letting, I'm not letting them affect me anymore. I finally have a football team that is, is decent at this point in the season. So I'm just going to focus on them. Hockey just started. The red wings are pretty solid right now. So like, you know, I don't even have time to worry about my baseball team. It's just going to let me down. I'm, I'm not even going to worry about it. 
I would yeah, like to have it on, but just for research purposes, because I have to report on it. Not because I care. I don't care at all. I want to hear your opinion on it, but more so Roberts on uh, major league baseball, absolutely putting the fix in to help the Yankees win the series. How, you know, uh, well, last night, you know, the, the torrential downpour that hit New York city, the absolute horrifying rainstorm that during your break, an entire soccer game was played during. Yeah. I was watching that. I was like, they're, they're playing at city field, the NYFC game. Why is that? It's uh, funny not, how that's okay, but when Garrett Cole had the ball, oh, we can play through the rain and it's no problem. But as soon as you guys are almost out of pitchers and you need an extra day of rest, uh, we couldn't possibly, possibly play. I don't a think it was a light the drizzle. Yankees that called the game. No, though. no, no. It was Major League Baseball being full of shit. I did. So see how do you think? How do you feel mad. about Rob, Rob Manfraud, who grew up? a Yankees fan just putting in the fix for his team. I don't necessarily think that's true, but I did see that people have already started a backlash of uh, like the new format. They're like, well, in reality, the teams that are, have the buys should get to pick who they play. Buster Posey. They should be what able a to do this. It was like, wait, what? No, that's how, I mean. that's how it was. That's how it was set up. You can't get mad at how you guys formatted it when it, the format doesn't go in your favor. Oh, I'm trying to find it right now. That's Buster why, you know, I don't, exact care. Tweet. I don't even care anymore, dude. I don't even, it doesn't matter. I remember Astros reading it. have won it as far as I'm concerned. They've won oh, it all. Well, Congratulations. Well, while gotta, I look up the title, I don't care. While I look up his actual ridiculous stance that he came out with, um, Robert, what was your thought on uh, man fraud just trying to fix it for his team? I don't know. I, I'm not that like reactive. So I'm not sure that he was trying to fix it. I just, I do think it's weird that a soccer game played when the Yankees Guardians couldn't. Like, well, soccer players, weird. soccer players are tougher than anyone on the Yankees. That's a fact. <laughs> or the Guardians. They should have played. Oh no, the Guardians wanted to Especially play. Especially what they yeah, think. the Yankees wanted to play too. They were all face painting shit. I don't think they really wanted to. Oh, like, and also Garrett Cole being the fakest fucking tough guy of all time. Good. Uh coach, I'm ready. Put me in if you need me tonight. Bitch, you threw 110 the day before. This is the same guy that bitched when his start time was uh, moved four fucking minutes because of Billy Crystal doing something before the game. The guy who couldn't who couldn't handle in, his start time being four he minutes late. In. He's the guy that was going to be like, yeah, I threw 110 yesterday, but I'm ready for the team, coach. I'm not just saying this because I know the story's going to get out to the papers. Dude, Gar- he's Garicle's ready a fucking to go. Douche. He's, he's ready douche. to help his team. He's the same guy that was ready to help the Astros in that World Series when AJ Hinch was just like, "Hey, dude, don't don't worry about it." Like, yeah, no. If you do 110 it, pitches, we'll, we'll save your arm for the Yankees. Like, you, and, and you all, don't need to go out there. Yeah, and also, it, yeah, if it was the World Series, maybe not for the DS. Uh to advance, it's a winner take all game. So I get it. Still, give it your uh, own, man. Here is Buster Olney's exact. I don't tweet. care. It doesn't matter anyways. Buster Pol- uh, Buster Olney's exact tweet, which is just outstandingly stupid. A way to greatly reduce the complaining about the postseason format. Let the respective number one seeds design their paths. Allow them to choose a buy or not, and all would take the buy. And then pick the two other playoff teams to be on their side of the bracket. That would be fun. No, it wouldn't, Buster. That's stupid. The whole point mm-hmm. of the regular season is it's just <laughs> seeding for the playoffs. If the whole yeah, thing what is, is the now, point? Now it's just, oh, your record doesn't matter. It's just whatever the team who had the most wins, what's whatever they decide. And also, that's part of the crazy fun of the postseason is the high seeds getting beaten by lower seeds. Like, just because you had a great regular season. Yeah, what if we did that in March Madness? What if we did that in March Madness and it's like, well, the one seed gets to set up their own bracket. It's like, no, 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 they don't. They play the fucking bracket. Yeah, That's That's why it's called a bracket, you dumb fuck. God, and what if I, we just I, voted on the teams? Huh? What if we just had a fan vote on which teams play which teams and then we put those teams against each other? Huh? It's we like do all, that. It's like the spirit of all the old baseball writers that have died 
that everyone's been waiting for them to die for 20 years and they're so like, that we oh, can no. get those douchebags out of the game. Oh, it's no, like their spirit just all went into Buster Olney. He's like, well, and Jeff, I'm, what's it, Jeff Passan? I'm part of the senior leadership of sports writers of baseball now. I have to have terrible ideas. No, you fucking idiot. Jeff Passan is the same guy, too, though, as Buster Olney. Yeah. He's, he's a fucking nerd. They have, like, the same takes. It's like, oh, well, actually, a clear calculation. What we should do here? And they, they, they don't respect the D-Lamb stat either, which we'll get to later. But, yeah, I don't care about baseball. So, like, all this stuff doesn't matter to me. It's over. It's over. It's really what I was trying to get at. before. It's not over until the fat lady sings. Before we got into a 20-minute conversation on baseball. Um... Yep. What else did I have that I wanted to talk about? Um, dust. Emma, Emma was telling me the other day, she was like, our house has so much dust in it. Like, like then she's like, we need to cut down on the amount of dust. I was like, how do we cut down on dust? I, I don't know how to make less dust. How do I, how do you make dust? How is that? Like, what is dust in general? It's just particles and stuff. I know there's like an actual answer, but like, I couldn't tell you. How do I do like, skin? You know, I'm not going to have any more dust. I'm going to cut down on it. Like, how do I do that? Either you start dusting every day. Right. That was my one thing. I was like, well, I'm not going to dust, though. So, like, well, you hire a maid. We're not rich, so not going to happen. Then you're going to have dust. The wife should do it, in my theory. I agree. I was like, I got married, dude. So, like, this is up to you. No, I thought you're, you. you're the one waking up at 4 o'clock in the morning, man. You need me to take your car to get fixed? I got gotcha. you. You need me to get oil changes. I'll take it to somebody else. So that's also See, car related. So all the car, is, if we have a, a lawn, I'll, I'll be she can do all that, that, but we don't. See, see, the way this argument would have worked is if you were manly enough to be like, you need me to change your oil. I got it. You need me to work on your car. I got it. Now you're just like, yeah, I'll drive it to the guy that knows what he's doing. I'll take the time to do that stuff. though. I'll take the time to bring our car to a real man. You do the woman work around the house. <laughs> I still do man things. I work. You have a penis, so yes, you do do I man do, things. I do man things. Can do you take a, Do you take longer than you need when you're taking a shit? Yeah, it's guy stuff. Man, man things. Man, watch things. football. Scratch your That's nuts. Man things. Sometimes yeah. sniff it. Not a lot, but yeah, occasionally. But you do from time to time. Yeah, sometimes you gotta sniff your nuts. Yes, yeah, just man stuff. But like, man I don't stuff. know. How do you? How does one besides like buying like? An air purifier and stuff, which we already have. Like, how do you cut down on making dust? You dust. Besides dust, like, how do I make less dust? There's not a way to just make less dust, is there? No. Not that I'm aware of. That was what I said. It's like I mean, it wasn't dirt. like a fight. I was just, I don't know what you want me to. I don't know how to how to how to make that stop. I'm I think sorry. it's like a combination. There's like dirt dead skin cells which like you're not going to get rid of either of those you go walk outside you're going to track some dirt in you got a dog we I, you got in. skin you're going to have skin cells yeah ain't shit you can do dog you either learn to live with the dust or you don't you i think everything should just be dusty i've lived in dust like I, I think it helps build up your immune system you just never get rid of the dust Except for when people come over and then you're like, clean it up a little you, bit. You, you just like don't, all the time. don't have people over. Or only have over your close friends that you can just look at and be like, yeah, my place is a shithole. I don't care. Yeah, it's messy. Yeah. Like, it's dusty. I don't fucking care. If you got a problem with it, leave. It's my well, house, okay. not yours. I don't think I was wrong in that. To be like, I don't think I can limit the amount of dust I make. But no, I even that if, was an interesting request. Theoretically, even if you could, you couldn't. You're not right. the kind of person that would I'm be not able to regulate do that. your dust. You're not going to change. I'm not going to. I'm set no. my ways. Yeah. I'm set my ways. Um, and the last thing I saw, um, like it's hurricane season. So everybody's talking about like tropical weather patterns and shit. And like now it's like <laughs> there's a cold front in and everybody is running those ads on like multiple stations. I've just seen like the we have the best technology, the best technology in the city. And it's like, even a radar, you can have a fucking weather radar, just like everybody else has. It's like, we have the QXP44 
weather radar tracker. And I'm like, yeah, Doppler. like they, you're right. Yeah. Dopplers are fancy. We're like, we got the Doppler 100. It's like, they have a thing too. Like I, I can just go to their website too. And it also shows like, this is the way weather goes. Yeah. I, I don't I can just steal their information and not spend lots of yeah, money. Yeah. It's that. the same shit. And then sometimes everybody's wrong. So it's like, it's weird that like they promote like, and we are the ones on the scene when there's a hurricane. It's like all the news stations are the ones on the scene when there's a hurricane. I still say I'd be great at that job. Yeah. Only, only when there's like, I'd be good at the, being the guy who's out in the hurricane. So I got a sturdy base and a lot of weight that's going to keep me on the ground. I ain't getting blown away. That's a good point. But I think that I think that might make you bad at that because all they want is they want like the, the the like the woman that's out there to be like getting blown around and like whoa all right yeah the winds are winds are really picking up over here and uh, yeah oh um, yeah we talked to the locals and they said it's windy back to you guys like I think that you wouldn't be as entertaining so they're like we gotta get Pat out of there I don't know I think I would He's be too sturdy. Think about it. When's the last time you saw a fat guy live on location? You don't see a lot. You don't see it. So you're just but like, that's look, at because... that. look at that fat guy getting rained on. Oh, dude. Can we you make that a representation play? Like, you know, they're not having big enough people like my friend Pat, who's always dreamed of covering storms and chasing storms. Pat's never been given an opportunity because they only want thin people in those roles. You know, meteorologists are really fat. Phobic. I mean, think about it this way. Do you want the skinny guy who's spending his weekend out running around, or do you want the fat guy that's always going to be on his phone and I can keep up to date with, uh, up to the second? I'm, yeah, I'm on my phone all the time. Yeah. That's all I do. I don't go be active and do things. I don't have family. My family is the weather. I'm in the bathroom total at least an hour 45 a day because I like to sit there. Guess what I'm doing? Checking weather stats. Yeah, you should definitely be a storm chaser. No, I don't want to chase storms. I don't want to fuck with tornadoes. No, I want shit. you to chase Those storms. Want, no, fuck tornadoes. Being hurricane guy, I can do that. Tornadoes are just land hurricanes. It's so much scarier for me. They just they just show up. All of a sudden, the sky just gets dark, and then they fuck come down. They wreck everything. You don't know where they're going to come down. I ain't getting sucked up in that shit. Hurricanes, yeah, at least, like, you know, you just... You just stand on the shore while the rain comes in. And once it gets truly bad, you get in a van and you get the fuck out of there. So you take, you think tornadoes are scarier than. But also, because I think it'd be really funny if like one of the things I've got known for doing out there. So if I would just take my shirt off and then be like, this is how hard the wind is blowing and have my producer just throw an egg like out in front of me and watch the wind just like whip it right into my stomach and break everywhere. I think that'd be a sick bit. And then just like like you could evolve it into just like pies and other yeah, stuff, pie, and just cake, like boom, haha! That this weatherman gets pied, or he gets hit with cake. Whatever yeah. the local food is that they have, like if you're in Maryland and there's a hurricane there, it's just crab cakes. Haha! <laughs> that hit him in the face. Nobody's gonna be like, that's not funny. Yeah, it's always funny. A lot of people are about to lose their homes. Well, the least we can do is make them laugh before they do it. We're in Louisiana, gumbo. Jambalaya. Oh, that would be fun. And if you awesome. look at the speed of this jambalaya as it hits his face, what is that? We go to our Doppler radar speed tracker, and that looks like that was hitting him at about 76 miles an hour. Wow. A little at Throw fair. that down. Rewind it again. Fuck yeah. That's the kind of weather coverage I want. Be different. I think there's everybody, everybody brags about the fancy technology they have to track weather but like do what we just said do what we just said i feel like we got a lot of great feedback on uh on wave turf football from last week put those, okay. those those floating bridges out just build a field on it like a lot of people are like that's a fucking great idea i would watch that it's like yeah, so many torn acls watch it. a lot but like people would watch it and i think that's what matters and so many um, ACLs. but it's about entertainment it's about entertainment and it's like yeah man everybody can watch your thing to get the same news they're getting about hey there's gonna be weather here in this area or they could tune in because they know that there's gonna be a guy that's gonna get pied or hit with some sort of food like i'm in yeah. that do you got to turn to channel six he's gonna have gumbo all over his tits in like two Dude, minutes 
It's almost Thanksgiving, dude. Pat's about to get hit with a bunch of cranberry sauce. Just because of the wind. I mean, if you have Thanksgiving Day storm, why not? I'll report from Chicago that day. Windy City. There's always wind. So, hey, any news stations listening, if you got any balls, you'll hire Pat. That's your guy. Robert, will you cut that up and make it like a like a highlight reel? Just, yeah. I don't know how you'd you'd Photoshop them in a bunch of other like severe weather situations, but if you could do that with like the pies and stuff, just you know, make them a little highlight tape. We'll put it out. We'll put it out for uh on his LinkedIn. So, uh, maybe demo we can reel. Yeah, <sighs> I was, I'll do demo uh, reel. I was gonna say maybe tomorrow we can try and uh do a test run of something, but I really don't want to get a bunch of food all over the golf course. That's probably not a great idea. They well, might not let us back. Lead it. Birds lead it. But also we can ants. actually we could probably get some we could probably get some stuff going with the the gravy hole at the Rod Ryan show golf yeah. tournament going down. Every tomorrow. everybody everybody bring sunscreen because I'm probably gonna forget. Everybody bring it. And pies. And pies. It's just snacks that'll look funny getting smashed on Pat's face. One egg. Why did it become face? I said I'd take my shirt off and it's all going to hit me in the belly and my tits. And you're just like, yeah, let's hit you in the this face. Upper, upper body area. You just want to hit me in the face, man. That's fucked up. Who also, fun thing that I found out, shout out to Brett Brandon for being in charge of the gravy hole. Um, he said that you're going to get, everybody at the gravy hole is going to get to tee off with their first shot using a metal baseball bat. And it's not going to hurt their score. So kind of sick. I mean, it I probably was, will I, hurt their score because I don't no, think they hit it as far. But. I was like, that'd be tight if you could just tee off with a baseball bat. I've always wanted to just play a round of golf with just metal baseball bats. Fuck yeah. I that think I could actually do okay at that. You I could direct like, that. toss it up and just... Kung. Be a lot of fun. Be a lot of fun. Let's do it. Um, if, if we do end up doing all of that, then we will uh, take it. We'll make a video of it and post it somewhere i don't know where at past great pod follow our socials um that's really all i had i think for the pre-com segment any uh robert mm-hmm. what did you bring to the table today buddy nothing uh well it was going back to the car talk i thought i had this thing that's super convenient uh like a portable air compressor so when, like your tires go flat around this time of year mm-hmm you don't have to take it to a gas station. You could just do it in your driveway because it just plugs into like the, the port in your car. I got one of those recently, and like it's been really oh, convenient because okay. just just like two days ago, I uh, got like the tire warning. I'm like, you know, what? I'm not. I don't have to take it to a gas station. I can just drive just here plug home. this bad boy in and go. Mm-hmm. Look at you. I, I think everyone should get one of those. My piece of not advice. Bad for idea. They also have those that you can, you can jump your car with. They do. I should get one of those too, just in case. I mean, I bought this car brand new, so my plan is anytime anything happens, I'm just going to bring it to Toyota and be like, "You guys said it was all covered. Fix it. Fix shit. it. Fix it." It's now. just a, it's just a tire. You just need a little air. We'll put some air in it. Jump, jump me to the front of the line. I got shit to do today. <laughs> I have a car, so I'm going to need to do it now. Mm-hmm. What did they tell you? You have to wait like two hours. I would probably just be like, okay, I'm going to listen to a podcast. No, I'll just, I'll just sit there and I'll fucking take it. Make it like it, it, now for like, I, I, I wouldn't bring it by just to get air in my tire, but like anything else, I'll just pick. Yeah. Cause I don't know how to do it. I don't know how long this is supposed to take. I don't know how many cars you have in front of me. I'm just going to shut up and do it. Cause it's a fucking car. And I don't understand the magic and wizardry that goes into making this thing fucking move forward. When I put my foot down. Yeah. Yeah, you're going to take it to a man who does know how to do it. Yeah, I'm going to take it to the fucking dealership. I bought that shit <laughs> brand new, so they're going to they do all this shit for free for me now. I do think it's interesting with like uh, when dealerships are like, yeah, and like for like you get a lifetime warranty, like anytime you bring it by, we'll wash it, we'll do this, we'll do that. And there's people that like you see like driving their car to the dealership 45 minutes to get like washed. It's like, I would just go to a car wash. I don't need a car wash that bad where I'm like, I'm just going to have the dealership do it. Like, yeah, I I'm won't. not, I'm never that guy that's going to take advantage of all that stuff. So like, I'm always like, it's not worth it to me. Like, that's not a plus. I needed one really bad. And I get that's day, why they do it. And I was like, you know, I could probably bring this by and I'm sure they would wash it for me, but like, I'm not bringing my car to the dealership to get a fucking car wash. You know, if I had something else to do. Yeah. I was like, I just went to the gas station by my house, 
spent the, I don't know, 12 $14, whatever it is. And I went through the fucking drive through They used how to be a, all sparkling clean. How often are you getting your car washed? Not that often. Either one of you. Four, maybe four times a year. It really needed it this time because a couple weeks, a couple weeks back, I uh, was getting gas, and so I used the squeegee to like clean off my windows. And I was like, "Well, let me just hit the whole car with this." And then the next day, I was like, "Oh, that water must have been filthy because it's just like dirt all over my fucking car." And I let it sit for like a week before I did anything about it. Honestly, I get my car washed like maybe once every three years, four years. So infrequently, what I do is I do you just clean wait for the it to windows. Rain. I clean the windows, but the yeah, I mean you car, have to. I don't care. Yeah, no, I don't give a shit either. It's just this one; it was so dirty because I used that fucking buck bucket that's at the gas station, and the water was not clean. Yeah, so it was so goddamn dirty. I was like, okay, well, let me let me just clean I think this. This year, I've done it three times. One time. No, two times was because of pollen on it. And I was just like, I'm just going to get this shit off. And then the other time I had gone camping and like to get to where we were camping, you had to go down one of those dirt roads where it was like that white dirt. So like the whole front of the car just had a bunch. It looked really dusty. So I was like, I'm just going to clean this off. Here's what I need to do. But yeah, normally I don't give a fuck. I just need to buy a hose. So occasionally when I do need it, I'll grab a hose and a sponge and I'll just scrub it real quick and then hose it off. And that's all I have to do. It's not a bad idea. I just don't even, I've, I've lived in a house for, I don't know, five years that I've been here. I don't even own a fucking hose. Dude, Never here's an idea. One. Here's an idea. You know how the car wash, they have those, you have to go through the thing. It's just like the, mm-hmm. uh, it's like a, like they're not towels, but they're like the squeegee things. And they just kind of like hang and you have to drive through it. We just need to have garages come where, like, when you back out of your garage, when you pull out of your garage, you just hit the button and it sprays it a little bit. So then you kind of get a little, little wash as you're going out. And then when you go back in, it's just you have a little drain under it. Doesn't have to be like a long like thing, but just like right when you go in, right when you go out. It's got the mister and then it's got the air jets. So like at least you get water on it and then it just blows it all off really quick. Yeah. Maybe that would work. I mean, and it wouldn't like wash your car like a hundred percent, but it would like probably keep it cleaner. You know what I used to like doing in college? I would, uh, when I needed a car wash, I would drive into that one and get like the, you know, $14 one, whatever it is, the biggest package. And then I would, you know, cause it throws all that multicolored foam all over your car and shit too. But then I would just smoke a bowl in the car and hot box it while it was doing that. And that was really fun. It's not bad. Yeah. Yeah. The only problem was at the time also, oh, home run Yankees. Darling. Judge. Darling. Judge. Jesus. Uh, yeah, no, the, my, I also didn't have AC at the time when that would happen. So sometimes I would just be hot boxing a car that was like a hundred degrees inside of it. Oh yeah. So like I would get out and roll down my windows and I'd be pouring sweat, but I'd also be pretty high. So that was cool. Just talking cars. <laughs> <I'm passing laughs> Fuck you, Judge. See, all we had to do was say he was never going to hit another home run, and literally one hit another one again. One inning later, one thirteen off the bat. Jesus, definitely blow this. We'll definitely one thirteen off the bat. Oppo. Do we upgrade that to a Marlin? I think it was still just a Darlin. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't even four hundred feet. No, uh, they ha- uh, we'll tell you. I'll tell you all of the categories I've come up with over the week coming up in a little bit. But uh, that was our all right. pre-come segment. Let's move on to the comeback kid segment. Um, this week it's brought to you by littleemshop.com, littleemshop.com. It's got a little bit of this and a little bit of that. It's a great gift website. If, uh, if you need some air fresheners, they do have the best air fresheners in the world. And when you go to uh, some car washes, there are certain car washes where you're going to find Little M air fresheners. There, you always want to get one of those. You never want to get one of those stupid little baby back bitch trees that's going to hang over your rear view mirror. You want to get a Little M shop air freshener, Little E-M shop dot com best smelling air fresheners on the planet i guarantee it and uh they save the trees unlike the little trees which ironically cut down multiple trees just to make those those they also have a uh, little limb shop they have awesome keychains that you can customize they have stickers they have t-shirts they have a uh, they have all kinds of awesome gift stuff if you need like a quick gift for somebody head over to little em shop 
Com. A lot of stuff to help you with productivity, a lot of uh, custom paper goods and stuff. You need thank you notes and other things like that. Head over to, head over to littleemshop.com, littleemshop.com. If you use our promo code PTG69, you're going to get 10% off of your order. You're also going to get free shipping on orders of $10 or more. So you can get free shipping if you spend $10 or more. And you can also get 10% off your order when you use promo code PTG69 at littleemshop.com. If you get anything from Little M Shop, tag them. Let them know you're supporting the people supporting the podcast, Little EM Shop shop.com they're at little em tweets on twitter and at little em shop on instagram please let them know you support the people supporting the podcast little m shop.com little em shop.com our promo code is ptg69 you get 10 percent off your order at little m shop.com the official sponsor of the comeback kids it's the comeback kid the comeback kid of the week the comeback kid of the week bitch all right, gang, our first comeback kid this week is Vests. Vests are back, guys. Damn right. It's Vests season. Um, it's getting folly. We got our first cold front end, and in Texas, that meant it was like 71 degrees today. But, like, I feel like a, like you're allowed to bust out the vest. Because you're, like, you're not a, too much of a hard when you bust out the vest. It's like, it's like pre-jacket weather, right? I was so jacked up this morning. I, I woke up, I got in the shower, I got out of the shower. When I got back to my room, I was like, oh yeah, because I could feel it. My window was open. I was, ooh, nice and cold weather. Immediately, imme- I've been waiting for this day for fucking weeks. Immediately, I grabbed a long sleeve shirt out of my closet, and then I threw that vest right over the top of that bitch. I was like, ooh, so <laughs> comfy. And I looked damn good in that vest. Oh, and I was like, sound- fuck yeah. Didn't- it's been sitting here since last vest season. Got the vest back on. Rocking I'm invested in it. Oh, V invested. This invested, is one of the baby. best investments I've ever made, too. It was like 20 bucks on Amazon. And I mean, I've worn it for a bunch of podcasts, but not really ever in a real life situation. But it's oh, dude, you got it. Dude, the sure. long sleeve, long sleeve shirt with the vest, so comfy. Just get like a, like, it's so warm right now. I don't even know what this one is. Wrangler shirt or something. I don't know. It's fucking cotton, cotton long sleeve and a vest. Super comfy. Not too hot. You can still roll up the sleeves if you need to. Your back gets a little hot. You can take the vest off, but it's probably not going to happen because it's got a lot of angles for air to still get back there. And, you know, you can cool, you can cool the arms sometimes if you don't go full on vest. That's Mm -hmm. the best part best of the vest is when you have the short sleeves on over it and you're just like oh my core is warm but that's all i need that's all i need i don't need to worry about my extremities because they'll be fine because the core is warm and the core warms everything else it's beautiful my science but happy vest season to everyone celebrating um also a comeback kid we got um it's actually like a two for one it's jason sudeikis aka ted lasso and then harry styles from one direction um not really one to be in celebrity drama but i feel like fellas we gotta pick a side here because olivia wilde seems a little wild if you ask me um she left jason sudeikis for harry styles and now apparently um uh, there was a story that maybe jason sudeikis to himself in front of her car at one point but she seems like a guy she seems like a guy trying to save his marriage you know like uh you know he found out maybe she was talking to harry styles while they were still together i don't fucking know that's not my place all I know is Ted Lasso would never. Ted, La- like, like you better I, never I, heard Ted Lasso. I can't believe I think, like we. This was a story arc a little bit, not so much Harry Styles, but like, it was a story arc in one of the seasons of Ted Lasso. And like, if you hurt Ted Lasso, fuck you. That's all I really have to say about it. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, the nanny saying that he laid down behind the car to get her to stop leaving to fuck. What's his name? Uh, yeah, I mean, before, all I saw was you had wrote something about Jason Sudeikis and Harry Styles. We need to choose a side. Right away, I was on Sudeikis. Side. It's Jason Sudeikis. Right away. Obviously. He's a fucking national treasure. He's the man. And he's Ted Lasso. Which, by the way, that seems like something Ted Lasso would do. Lay down behind his wife's car to try and save the marriage. Just a very Ted Lasso type thing to do. They're both saying it's bullshit, not true, and their nanny's just kind of a bitch. Which, like, oh, what a shocker. Celebrity nanny all of a sudden starts talking to everybody she can as soon as they go through a divorce to try and get her 15 minutes of fame. Good point. Is what it is. 
yeah, I'm on Sudeikis' side. Fuck Harry Styles. I'm not Robert, a 14-year-old girl, so I don't give a shit about Harry Styles. Robert, what do you what do you think about the whole situation? Whose side are you on? Uh, I don't know. Like, if it what Jason did, if that's true, I mean, that's kind of kind of cringe of him, man. Kind of cringe. Is he cringe, or is he just a kinda guy cringe. that was trying to save his marriage or relationship? I don't know if they were married. Were they married? I don't oh, think they were. They have bad kids. Oh, yeah. No, I, I, I'm pretty sure they were married. Yeah, they're saying, like, he found emails between her and Harry that proved that they were cheating. And uh, I'm on Team J.C. Yeah. Davis 100 out of 100 times here. All right. Harry Styles can fuck off. She also said that he fired her in a drunken Harrison. rage. Okay. Well, you know what? Even Ted Lasso needs to fucking blow off some steam sometime. And this woman seems like a real bitch. So I think he made the right call. We're not even going to call him Harry Styles. Anyways. He's Harrison Styles from now on. All right. Just make sure, everybody, if you ever refer to him from, from this moment forward, it's Harrison Styles. I would have said Harold. Try and correct. No, it's Harrison. Harrison okay. Stylish. Harrison Stylers. Harrison Stylers. Yep. Yep. Oh, that Harrison Stylers fella from BTS. I keep getting it mixed up. With BTS in one direction. Yeah. No, by the way, not a team guy. Had a group, abandoned them all. Not a team guy. Wow. Real me first kind of kind of character. Yep. You yep. know who else was too? Olivia Wilde. Her band was her marriage. And she wanted to go solo with Harrison Stylers. Instead. That's not going solo. Well, she wanted to go solo with another person that was going solo together. She's just homie hopping. Try, I'm trying to make my homie. point and you're ruining it. I'm just trying to direct your point to the right place. Hey, we're hashtag team Jason on this center. I right, gang all day team Jason all day. Um, next comeback kid we got is tearing down goalposts because that shit was back this weekend. I don't know. Robert doesn't watch college football. I know whatever dude, but like Tennessee, upset Alabama. They beat them for the first time in 15 years. And that was one of the wildest things I've seen. Like they fucking ran out on the field. They stormed the field. They filled up the field. They ripped off the goalposts and then threw it into the river, which is ripped up parts, ripped up parts of the field too. Well, because it's, it's sentimental at that point. They smoked a lot of cigars. I was going to say, I didn't know that was a, uh, thing in this rivalry that the winner just smokes a shit ton of cigars honestly though i didn't really either but i always that's just a, saw alabama smoking tradition. cigars and i was just like you're just smoking cigars because you're alabama and you're badasses like that's yeah. just what i assumed it was that was one of those things it was like well, one of those rivalries where it's like is it a rivalry anymore because like only one side wins it's kind of like sam houston and stephen and boston like only one side's won for 11 years it's not really a big deal anymore um and, and like now that they're not gonna play anymore it's not going to be but uh that was tight Pat did convince me to bet on Tennessee and I bet on Tennessee and they did win. So we won some money on that one. Um, But that was absolutely electric. And I also love the whole uh, like, well, why did they have to, why'd they have to throw the goalposts into the river? Why couldn't they like, there's people that have like, they try and get like moral high ground on college kids that are celebrating absurd things like winning for the first time in 15 years. There's that like, like would they celebrate like that? Like, why would you do this? That makes no, that makes absolutely no sense. It's like, uh, cause they're college kids and they were just excited. They didn't really think about anything. Like nobody, like your brain's not developed just yet. Well, so like we're working on it. And like, what else are you going to do? Like, I'm not going to take the, the goalpost to my dorm room and then get in trouble for having the goalpost that was stolen in my dorm room. I'm just going to throw it away. I'm not going to fucking take it back to the stadium. I'm not going to walk all the way back there. Like, where where are we? We're at the river. Let's just toss it in there. There's there's so many layers of this to just explain away all that. One, don't ever try and make sense of anything guys between the age of, like, 16 and 24 do in general. Two, definitely don't try and make sense of anything that guys do in college. Three, don't try and make sense of anything football fans do. Four, don't make sense, try and make sense of anything that college football fans do. And five, especially if they're SEC college football fans true, winning a rivalry true, yeah. for the first time in 15 years, just let that shit go. Why'd they throw in the river? I don't know. That's probably part of the tradition. We just haven't seen it happen in 16 fucking years. They were giving so we it back to nature. 
They're giving it back to nature and they're going to let it float back to its home. Wherever. Dude, I don't know. Dude, the last time Tennessee won this, we were like sophomores in high school. Yeah. It's a long fucking time ago. That was literally, literally half my life ago. Long ass time ago. So like people were trying it's to get upset football, about man. that. I mean, who the know, fuck got upset about that? No, like, I bet, I bet, I bet Buster Olney probably got upset about that because he's a fucking it was nerd. The same, yeah, it was the same people that got mad that the Astros like tweeted out that they swept the Mariners and they put like a broom in the picture and people were like, oh wow, that is just not even classic. Like, shut the fuck up, dude. Just shut the fuck up. It's it's a social media account, man. Relax. Have you Get considered shutting the fuck up? But like people on on Twitter on Saturday night, and like I was going in and out of a concert, so I only saw like a handful of tweets about it. And I know there had to be a lot more, but they were these college kids just showing absolutely no class. I love the like the class, like the wow, real class here, showing no class kind of guys. Like you're the worst person. Oh, it's a it's it's a college football game, sports, and it's a shit ton of drunk college kids. Class class. Has no part of this. You don't have to show class. Nobody has to show class. Okay. Trying to be the class police. Maybe just chill out. That's not classy to be the class police. Not classy to try and be the class police. And you sound like a fucking narc. Wow. Everybody, look at this. This is so unclassy. It's like, dude, you would fucking call the cops on your neighbors, I bet. Because you're a scumbag. A hundred percent. The person saying that's not classy is the person that would try and report everybody in their dorm when they were a freshman in college. Like, uh, I have class tomorrow, and you guys are up being really loud at 1030 at night. Uh, hey, I think I smelled weed down the hall. It uh, might have I been marijuana. I didn't beers. see it, but it looked like I saw him, and he looked like he could have smoked marijuana. Fuck you, Jeff Passan. I know it's you. That was Jeff Passan. Absolutely. And Buster Olney was like, he was probably the... Uh, the RA. Olney was definitely an RA. Olney was, he was 100% absolutely an RA. An RA. And, 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 and not, not a cool RA. RA. Yeah, like he, he was, was like the, the guy was doing it for room and board. He was the RA that was doing it because he really still wanted to be in the dorm because he, he wanted dorm friends. Life. He didn't but have also, friends. well, no, and he wanted any semblance of authority. And he wanted friends, and like he didn't have friends, but he thought like everybody that lived in the dorm and had to like deal with him would be his friend. And it's like, no, people don't want to be friends with people that rat them out. I just remember my RA being like, "Yeah, dude, like if we don't see each other, that'll be a good year." And I was like, "Fuck yeah." Yeah. He was just like, just don't, don't get me involved. And I was like, you got it, dude. He lived and on the right. opposite end of the hall as me. And I think I spoke to him that day and no other days. And all right. It was a cunt. And um, I did get kicked out of my dorm. And then I had my next dorm RA. We got, I was like, yeah, dude, I don't really give a shit about most of this stuff. Just be chill. And I was like, all right, tight. And I did about the exact same stuff I did in the previous dorm. And I had no problem. So it was just like, huh. It's amazing how just not being an asshole that's trying to control everybody around you is uh makes things different. Um, but yeah, that going back to that, um, people were the class police, not cool, but fucking tearing down goalposts. It's tight because it's like storming it's the court awesome. in college basketball happens a lot because people upset people a lot. And in college football, storming the field is tight, but like you don't really see the goalposts go down anymore. And that's like a once every once in a while thing. I, I get it. Not every game is a goalpost game. This was absolutely a goalpost game. So it makes sense. And just watching the videos of people like taking it down, whatever the streets were in Knoxville to get it to the river. At a certain point, it was just like, that's hilarious. And there's just a group of like, nope, wherever this fucking goalpost goes, I go too. Like, we carry this out. Where do we go? I don't know. We're just following this guy. Okay. Where's he going? I don't know. Wherever the goalpost takes us. It's like a Ouija board. Like, you don't know. You Guys, just go the river's where that direction. you're led. Then it's going in the river. We're going in the river then. What do we do? It just, we, let, we set it free. We set it free. We let it find its next home. I wonder if they're just going to let it stay there or if they're going to crane it out. I hope they just let it stay there. And like, I like, wonder how deep the river is right there. Cause like, if that's a river that you actually have to get boats through having goalposts right there could be a problem. Yeah. Like a shipwreck. Like you could always like, and this was the remaining goalpost from the 2022 upset win over number, number three, Alabama. But like, time. if that ever happened for Texas state, that'd be sick. But also the river that runs through campus right there, the goalpost would definitely be sticking out of the water, even if it was like on its side. Like it's not. So it's that'd just be kind a, of like a monument. 
Yeah, it'd be I mean, super monument, sick. Though. The Christmas lights on it when it's like the holidays. Spooky decorations on it for spooky season. It's a lot of stuff you could do with it. Not that Texas State will ever win a game big enough, especially at home to warrant pulling down the goalposts because we don't play those kind of people or those opponents at home. They invite us to, like, they pay us to come play them to kick the shit out of us. Right. Right. So but, uh, but, yeah, tearing up goalposts, that was sick. That was the coolest, like, college celebration, really, that's happened in a, a very long time, I feel like. And I think we'll both agree on this, no matter what the line is next week, Bet Bama. Uh, Saban ain't losing yeah. back-to-backs. Saban's going to have them absolutely murder whoever they play next week. Yeah, I'm I'm cool with that. I have no idea who they play. Neither do I. I'm looking it up right now and but seeing what the line is. I don't care if the line is auto bet it. Just auto bet it. Is um, it AM? No, they already played AM. That's right. Oh, that's right. They almost lost to them. All right. So uh, our next Mississippi State. Yeah, they're gonna beat the ever living dog shit out of them. So our final comeback here we got this week is analytics. Specifically, baseball analytics. Because if you uh, if you don't remember last week, I invented a revolutionary stat that's going to change the game of baseball. The DLAM, um, you know, home runs are based on are, are judged now on a scale of Darlins, Marlins, and Darlin like a Marlin. And um, since then, I've gone back and I've watched every home run hit in the postseason, and I have ranked it on a scale of Darlin to marlin to darlin like a marlin and if you guys were wondering let me give you guys the uh the updated list we got so um this is a little uh, like they have to be over 400 to be a marlin and then like you got to be able to be like that's that's fucking sweet like you gotta be like that's fucking sweet to make it darlin like a marlin but then inside the park home runs are absolutely darlin like a marlin so i gave the phillies one based on that because like that's fucking sick right A, a whole an inside the park home run is never not darlin like a Marlon, the official D lamb count of the 2022 postseason. Um, we got the Phillies and Astros tied with two Darlin like a Marlins. That is the, the most, and they are the only two teams that actually have Darlin like a Marlins that have, have had that. They've done it twice. The Phillies was one on uh, one of them was, was an inside the Parker and the other one was just an absolute bomb. And the Astros were Jordan Alvarez's walk off Homer. And then Jeremy Pena's in extra innings. And Jeremy Pena's in extra innings wasn't like crazy, crazy, but it was like vibe. 18th inning. That's what I was going to say. I wasn't sure. That's that's what I judge it on. Well, like if it's nothing special, a 400 one, it like that plays. It's a Marlin. Okay, I'll give you that. But like if you're like, damn, one run was was scored in 18 innings. Right. And it was just like vibes. You judge on vibes. And that was a big, like a big stat. Like you can't measure. You can't measure yeah. vibes with every other stat in baseball. This is the only baseball stat in the world that measures things based off of vibes. And I think if you look at it, the Phillies are in the, the NLCS, the Ashes in the ALCS. They're the only damn teams that have had Darlin like a Marlins. They've got multiple ones. I think it speaks volumes. And it's, and it's the totality of the vibes that go with that one too. It's not just that it was 18th inning home run, only run of the game set advance us in the postseason. It's also the fact that he's taking over. This is his first season taking over for Carlos Correa, who was one of the most productive postseason players of all time. Always, I didn't even factor that in. It was just the vibes at the moment. That's what's it. But that's what's it. That it's not just the moment vibes. It's all of that too. He's taking over for this legendary. But what he put into that led to the vibes. And it's his first postseason. It's like I said. It's the totality of the vibes on that one. That was just a big moment to him. Go. You know what? I'm here. I can do maybe not everything Carlos could do, but I'm going to show up for this team. There you go. Um, so Marlins on the seat on the postseason. Braves, Astros, and Yankees all have two. And then the Dodgers and Padres each have one. The rest have been Darlins. But um, just wanted to give you guys a D-Lamb count so far that the postseason. I'll keep you guys posted uh, throughout the remainder of the postseason, obviously. But I just think that this is an absolutely revolutionary stat. And I mean, again, the one that, that, that factors in vibes that really shows you a lot. I think we're going to look at the, probably the two teams with the, the highest D lamb count are very likely going to be in the world series this year. And like, that's just proves my stat to be correct. Vibes win games. A lot of times stats help. 
but vibes win games. That's true. And I think through one week of tracking this, there's no arguing it. And um, I don't know. I would love it if the Yankees could add some, some D lamps tonight, but I don't think it's going to happen because the Yankees are probably going to lose this game. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. Um, but yeah, analytics back in a big way this week and changing the game. Um, what, what do you have? Uh, you I got one more. one more and it's, so basketball season officially starts today. This is Tuesday as we're recording. It starts today. That's not what I give a shit about for this. Who fucking cares about basketball? I don't care. I think I'll probably be betting the Rockets more this year, probably more in props than actually betting them because they got young players that are fun to watch. So I think we can get some point overs. Um, basketball starts again today. So on Thursday, we're going to have the, four, the first sports equinox of the year. We're going to have football, basketball, baseball, and hockey all on the same goddamn day. Sports, sports, it's sports, sports. Sports equinox, baby. I love it every fucking year. I don't even care. I don't care about basketball. I'll watch basketball on that day out of respect. Out of respect. Out of respect. The four majors are going. Yeah. You got to respect it. That is pretty sick. I didn't even think about that. But yeah, yeah. basketball is back tonight. So it's like, that I time of year, dude. Be- I'll be in full swing. Yeah. And, I, and I'm just in a good mood because like, while I can't bet college baseball or college basketball, fuck college football to save my life or anything. And NFL's not going so hot right now. Hockey. I'm hot. Yeah. Hockey's been fun. I've been watching a lot of hockey this week. I've gone perfect. Two out of the last three or f- two out of the last four days in my hockey bets. Red Wings starting off pretty good this year. Looking pretty good. Bruins. Bruins are a wagon right now, dude. Nobody gives a shit what we're talking about, but right. But just saying, those two follow Gravy said, Gambles. I'm gonna start. At, I gotta I, at Gravy Gambles. I gotta I gotta start sending all my hockey picks out because it's literally the only sport that I make money in gambling. So sports. I suck at everything else. Sports, sports equinox, baby. They're back. Just sports in general. Um. All right, that was our comeback kids segment. Now let's move on to the what would Jesus do segment, where you guys keep this segment alive. Um, you put Jesus in a, in a in a situation he'd find himself in if he came back today. Um, use the hashtag PTGWWJD to at PassGrayPod on Twitter and uh, throw Jesus in a modern day situation he might find himself in. We'll tell you what he would do based on um, just pretty much what we think because uh, we used to get those WWJD bracelets. They never told you what he would do. They just asked the question. We are actually answering that question. So hit us up, hashtag PTGWWJD. At Pass Great Pod on Twitter. This is the What Would Jesus Do segment. Jesus, Jesus, what would Jesus do? Jesus, Jesus, what would Jesus do? Put him in a situation in a matter of time. If you wrote the stream, do you think he'd make it rhyme? So think about this crazy world in which we live today. And how would Jesus handle it? And then he gave it away. All right. This week's What Would Jesus Do comes to us from our buddy Mike Fish at Only Mike Fish on Twitter. He says, if Jesus got pulled over for a DUI, would he take the punishment or would he use his Jedi powers to get away with it? Yeah, he would just change the, let's face it, because he was probably drinking wine. He would just change the wine in his body to water. and he Back would, to water so he wouldn't be drunk. Yeah. Um, I honestly, I don't think he would because I don't think he would lie. I don't think he would sin and do that. But I think if he did, he would take the punishment because what have we seen? G- JC's a guy that takes punishments for, for not even just himself, but for all mankind. Mm-hmm. Like dude took, like he, some would say it's like the ultimate punishment. Like he died for our sins, you know, like that, you think that guy's going to try and get away, get out of a DUI when he died for our sin, like all of us, that dude's yeah, like, yeah, hey, whatever. Yeah. Take me to jail, whatever you need to do. Like you got to fucking nail me up. I guess we can do that again. We know how that goes. I'll be All back right. in three days. <laughs> Do you know who my dad is? He's going to bail me out in three days. Or is, yeah, is, that would have been funny. Is Jesus the ultimate? Do you know who my dad is, guy? <laughs> that would be funny. I think he would take the punishment. Yeah, that was probably. like short and sweet, but it's like, you can't tell me that the guy that died for everybody, but like getting nailed to a cross, having to carry a fucking cross, wearing a crown of thorns, all of that shit. You think that guy's going to just be like, ah, I don't want a DWI, though. He would never get a DWI, but if he did, he would take the punishment for it. Um, that makes sense. Right. 
There's a good one, Mike. At only Mike Fish is uh, is where you get him at. at Pass the great pod hashtag p hashtag PTG WWJD is where you send us your what would Jesus do segments. And uh, just remember, we're gonna stop doing this when you guys stop giving us the submissions. At Pass the great pod hashtag PTG WWJD. Moving on, we got the not cool segment where we tell you guys what's not cool throughout the week. Um, you can also contribute on this one as well. If you hit us up at Passery Pod, use the hashtag PTG not cool. Just something that makes you say, hey man, that's not cool. We'll pick some of the best ones each week and read them to you guys. Um, this one, is, th- this week's not cool segment is brought to you by our friends at Southern Star Brewing Company uh, because a lot of things in life I might make you say not cool, but one of those things in life will never be Southern Star Brewing Company because they are always cool. They got the best beers, on the planet, they got uh, my personal favorite is the strawberry bombshell blonde. I was uh, I was talking to somebody the other day, and they're like, I had never tried the bombshell, the strawberry bombshell, and I did the other day. It was at the grocery store. What the fuck? How have, how have I waited so long? I was like, I don't know, man. Like you're you are wasting your life away if you're not trying a strawberry bombshell blonde. And I mean, not just that. There's so many other ones you can get the regular. Try bombs. everything. Yeah, try a little bit of everything. Like you know, like certain certain companies, they only have one kind of beer that they make. Southern Star makes a billion different kinds of beers. And if you go up to the brewery, three five two five North Fraser Street, up in Conroe, tell them you're part of the Gravy Game. They'll hook you up. We got a flag hanging on the wall and everything. They'll uh, let you try all kinds of stuff, and they got a bunch of stuff that's just tap room exclusive that they haven't released in cans or anything like that. You can fill up your crawlers or your growlers at the brewery. They got all kinds of awesome stuff, and um, I, I promise you, there's gonna be something for everybody. The uh, the strawberry bombshell blonde, like I said, is my personal favorite. They got the wits. They got uh, the storm of the beaches salt and lime beers. They have uh, they have the conspiracy theory IPAs. Um, maybe you, you're not a beer guy or gal, then uh, try the the uh, the Sunday the Southern Brunch, the Citrus Shandy. It's like a mimosa in a can. It's incredible. There is definitely something for everybody at Southern Star Brewing Company, the official beer sponsor of Past Great Podcast. Uh, if you're drinking a Southern Star at any point in your day. Tag them at Southern Star BC and at Southern Star Brewing Co. on Twitter and Instagram and tag us as well at Passery Pod. Let them know you're supporting the people supporting the podcast. Southern Star Brewing Company, the official sponsor of the Not Cool segment, which we will begin right now. Not cool, man. Dude, that's not cool. Not cool. Not cool. Dude, that's not cool. Not cool, man. Dude, that's not cool. Not cool. Not cool. Dude, that's not cool. Not cool. All right, so uh, to start us off with our Not Cool segment, we'll read some of your submitted Not Cools. If you'd like to submit a Not Cool throughout the week, hit us up, hashtag PTG Not Cool to at Pass Gray Pod, and we'll pick some of the best ones each week. Let's start off this week with Alexis Garcia at Alexis Texas underscore on Twitter. She says her Not Cool is having two roadies in the car while a cop is tailing you. Yep, that's a scary moment. Been there. You know what a roadie is, Robert? I do not, but I can kind of guess from the context, it's probably like alcohol. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, you take a roadie, Hey, let's uh, go to this place. Let's take a couple roadies. And it's just like beers. You're no road soda. Car, which not allowed to do obviously, but yeah, especially when a cop's following you. Cause then that's absolutely drinking and driving is what you're going to get in trouble for. But nine out of 10 times, like you don't get in trouble for that. So like, we're not condoning that. We're not condoning that. But like sometimes you're like the passenger, or you're in the back seat, and you're like, I just wanted to take a little, little beer with me. Don't condone that if you're driving. But, but just saying, like, yeah, that's a that's a scary feeling. Whether or not Very you scary. are the reason that it's happening, it's still scary and not cool. So um, that's a good one to start us off this week. Our next one is from Danielle Weston at Danny underscore Weston on Twitter, and she says. Her not cool is the guy at the bar at Texas Roadhouse, which is authentic as fuck. If you guys forgot, um, uh, Texas, the guy at the bar at Texas Roadhouse, obnoxiously clapping every pitch during the Astros game. It's three p.m. and he is shit faced, and she really capitalized every pitch because he's probably just the woo. Let's go, boys! Woo! Yeah, come on, woo! Which I understand initially like what his point of view is but yeah that is really annoying to everybody else yeah you can't be the every pitch guy but also i'm not mad at the guy because i wasn't there uh i would have been if i was there but i do season baseball it is postseason baseball like there's there's passes but like i get like danielle and danielle's not somebody that complains about just dumb shit you know, Danielle Actually, typically is a 
Danielle's typically somebody that's pretty level headed. So I feel like it had to be a super like annoying level for her to be like, fuck this. Cause I feel like it was the guy just like cheering every single pitch. That's a lot. Like that's, that's like the <coughs> you get into, like mom at a little league game. It's like, come on, Ray, Ray, come on, Ray, Ray, get that pitch. Come on, Ray, Ray. And you're like, stop, shut the fuck up. Stop, shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Your kids in left field. Shut the fuck up. Like just settle down. Like I, I get like, dude, we're not all here to watch the game. A lot of people probably are. A lot of people probably were, but like, chill out a little bit. I think that's worse. I think I am here to watch the game. You can't, after every pitch, you can't be doing this, dude. Yeah, you're, I, I, you're I, killing I, the I, vibes. I would say something. I think, dude, you can't, like, I appreciate you're excited and I'm there with you. Can't clap after every pitch. I mean, you just can't, you cannot do it. You're going to drive everyone in here absolutely fucking insane. And then I would also look at the bartender, but can you please cut him the fuck off so he'll leave? This guy won't shut the fuck up. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to watch the game. You're killing the vibe for everybody else. You can't be that guy. Can't kill the vibe. It's like wave guy. Like that's probably wave guy. Like you get a little taste of it. Like he claps. People are like, yeah. And so he's like, I'm going to do this every time. Like it's like wave guy. You're like, dude, settle down, man. We're not going to do the wave again. Dude, there, was, right. there was one, two, three. You're like, nope, we're not going to do the wave again. There was, there was one guy at the restaurant the other day. So when the Astros were in the postseason. Uh, I don't have music playing through the speakers at work. What I do is I switch it over. So I have the Astros playing through the speakers at work when it's in postseason mode. I don't blare it though, because like in order to actually really hear everything that's going on in the commentary and all that, I would have to turn it up really high and then it can get like really loud in there and it makes it hard to hear. But like I have the sound on, you can kind of hear the rustle of the crowd crack the bat you can hear that kind of stuff you're just not hearing all the, the commentary ambience. but it's yeah it's the ambiance you're trying to get the vibe of the game going exactly the other day as the restaurant started to fill up a little bit one of the guys who's at the bar out of nowhere was just like um you know can you uh can you just turn on music because i can't really hear the game i was like oh i can turn it up like a little bit and we can hear it better and like we weren't full bar was like maybe half full the restaurant maybe half full i don't even know it was like nah you can just put on music I was like, you fucking douche. Don't be that guy. I think this was last Tuesday. So I think it was what? Game two of it? Whatever the fuck it was. Something like that. But I was just like, what the fuck? And then, of course, this guy sits the entirety of the game. Him and his wife is just sitting there drinking. And he was cool. and Not a bad guy. He's a semi-regular. He comes in. But then also waits until like 10 minutes before the kitchen closes to order his food. I was like, dude, come on. Like, you know we're closing at 9. You, and you knew. It's yeah, like you it's knew 845. You put in your fucking food. You've been here since fucking, f- like, 4. You've been here for, like, four and a half hours. Yeah. Order your nice. fucking food. I was like, D- just don't be the guy that kills the vibe. Don't be that guy. And I think that's really what Danielle is pointing out here. That guy was clearly killing the vibe. Or I don't think Danielle would be like, fuck this guy. Especially during postseason sports. Just let the vibe be. Hey, man. We're all trying to watch this too. Settle down. Don't be a vibe Settle vampire. Down. Don't be a vibe vamp. Vibe yeah. vampires. No, no. Not, I mean, it's spooky season, you typically want vi- uh, vampires, but we don't want vibe vampires, right? That would actually be a pretty sick Halloween costume where like, you just dress up as a vampire and all you do is go around trying to ruin people's vibes. Just kill, Kill the vibe. Like, oh, you know, uh, last year, uh, 3,000 kids under the age of 12 died on Halloween last year. You know, one, one in 30 pieces of candy that's given out is filled with poison, kids. Hey, you know, one stop. Out of, <laughs> one out of every alcohol poisoning death for kids under 18 happens on Halloween. Did you know 40 Ironmans were murdered last Halloween in that exact costume? What? Stop. Stop talking to my son. Who are you? Just a on average, neighbor. rape goes up twenty four percent on Halloween. You're just like, stop! Get, Will you leave? Get away! Party? Leave us alone! <laughs> no, no, it's my costume. I'm a vibe vampire. I'm a vibe vampire, dude. I'm a vibe vampire. When we had a vampire on this show, go just go Google past your navy vampire. Uh, he he was an energy vampire, and the way he talked about it made it seem like he was really just a vibe vampire. <laughs> I'm sure, like you, you know, somebody's come in and. This is like all the energy of the room has been sucked out. And it's like, yeah, those two are the worst, dude. Oh, that's you? Okay. <laughs> don't be that guy or gal. Don't be that guy. We don't want vibe vamps. Um, that's a solid, not cool, Danny. And I think we get what you're saying, man. Um, 
Ashley Wilkins at Buster Hiller Mix writes in with our next one. And she says, these trucks that park on our street, they park the wrong way. I can hear them idling in my bedroom all night. This one was here from noon until around 4 a.m. And uh, Robert, attach the picture when you put the video version up. But um, they're, they're idling all night. That seems like such a monumental waste of gas. Yeah, not very green, if you ask me. Why the fuck do they keep it on all night? You should send a letter to Joe Biden like we did last week. You sent that, Robert, Robert right? Also, I feel like that's an appropriate time to be able to call the cops and just be like, Wave turf football. Hey, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. you know, we're, my family's trying to sleep and this truck is just idling right outside of my house all fucking night. Can you tell them to turn the shit off? Call the cops. Don't call the cops. I think that's then, actually an acceptable time to call, call the cops. cops. Like, they're if, like, if they're making sketch. noise all night long, because that's what it is, this even is if it's sketch, just idling. Dude. Yeah, that sucks. Tell them to go park at the fucking construction site that I'm sure they're there for. Yeah, and they have all those like rest stops they can go like on the way up to Huntsville. There's always those like park areas you can pull up to and just like yeah. park at. So I don't know there's loves and buckies all station. around. Yeah. Yeah, there's uh there's plenty of other places. You shouldn't be doing that outside people people's house. That's a sod, not cool, Ashley um what do we got what we got next um next one is from brandon davis aka texas cat daddy at a stream of cream uh he says nobody in either vehicle the truck on the right is at an angle yo this is a street yo is this a street for bikes i didn't mention this but i sat there for 10 minutes i tried finding the dudes but no luck uh he attached a picture and um to describe the scene it looks like yeah it looks like they're two like work trucks uh, one of them is like one of those like yard work trucks with the trailer on the back and it is at the angle. And then there's another truck that's just kind of like blocking the street. So nobody could get by. Um, yeah. That's not cool to do that. Uh, I, I mean, I guess there's one person that probably started that and was like, Oh, okay. Like this isn't gonna be a big deal, but whoever the second car was that then saw that like, there's no way to get around. That's an asshole. move. That's an asshole. I, mean, I would have, sure. I would have absolutely just laid on my horn. Until now, eventually somebody play? came out. You just lay no, on put, your horn. Put that picture oh, in the, in the video. That and, too, Robert. But like, yeah, that's a, that's a fucking and, dick move. And you can see this. Uh, one of them has like, so yeah, it's uh, like yard worker stuff. Like one's got a bunch of wheelbarrows. The other one, he's just got loose lumber in the back of his truck. I would just start taking all the lumber out and put it in front of his car. Just make, make a Eugene convenient. Oh, hey, I had some yeah. time since I couldn't go anywhere. Oh, yeah. I was waiting for 10 minutes. Oh, you finally came out to move your car? I appreciate that, but you need to put, take all that lumber and put it back in your truck before you move it. Just Jason Sudeikis it? Go with lumber? Yes. Yeah. Do the Absolutely. Jason Sudeikis challenge, but with the guys like a lumber, lumber truck. Jason Sudeikis look like in front of the guy's truck but like yeah whoever the, whoever the the asshole was not the person that was the first car there is the second car there because there's no yeah. way they didn't see that they were then blocking everybody and like and oh it's just gonna be real quick wide open yeah it's wide. just gonna be real quick like there's no way that you thought it it was just gonna be like quick enough if like you had time to park there and get out like without seeing like hey i'm being an asshole here that i mean i would lose my absolute fucking mind uh, yeah, you lay lay cool. on the horn. You just lay on the fucking horn. If that doesn't work, maybe try shaking one of their trucks until an alarm goes off. Like you gotta do something big. I gotta get through the street, and I can't drive. It looks like well manicured lawns there. You can't drive through somebody's yard, right? Because it's not their fault. It's not their fault. It's the people that that just parked there's fault. Um, but yeah, that's a real shitty, uh, real shitty, not cool. Sorry that happened to you, bro. Sorry, buddy. Tease and tease. Um, is that all we got? Yeah, that's all the listeners submitted not cools at past gray pod, hashtag PTG not cool. If you'd like to submit yours in the future, I can go first. Uh for no. us. Um, one of them is that I forgot to record the Gravy Gambles show. We do ads for every single week. And um, my Thursday I had a lot of stuff I was doing. And I uh, was going to bed and I was like, I finished everything. This is awesome. I scheduled all this stuff. I got all this edit- edited stuff done. And then I, I got in bed and I was like, oh, fuck. Yeah, me too. I did not record with Pat. And then we just ended up being like, we're just going to tweet it out. But I mean, like we put our picks out. 
Because like normally too, if like I don't hear from you on a Thursday after a certain amount of time, I'll normally message you by like two o'clock. I'm like, hey, what time are we gonna do it today? Yeah, blah, blah, blah. we're just gonna do it before the game, whatever. And I didn't think about it completely for completely blanked on it. One second until like what 10 30 at night when you texted me. I was like, oh fuck. Oops. So sorry about that. We'll have one out. We'll have one out this week, I promise. Mm-hmm. We might just record it at the golf tournament tomorrow. Um, to make sure that we don't forget. But yeah, that that's on me. That's that's a not cool. And then um, my other not cool is was working out yesterday, not to brag, but um I fucked up my back and my back is really hurting now. So like that's not fun. I'm not usually a back pain guy and uh got some back pain today. It's not great. It's not fun. It's just like it's not fun. What you get for working out, Alex. What did you do? Yeah. Uh, I was doing some re- those reverse crunches where you like hold the weight and you like sit back up while you're on your knees. Kind of work in those back muscles. I'm not used to it. So uh, not a lot of fun this morning when I woke up or all day or right now. Can't do anything without your back. Yeah, it's pretty essential to the rest of of your body, I would say. Dude, so, even when uh, my back is not hurt, pain, every so cool. often, every so often I'll just like turn and be like, ah, ah. Uh ow. Mm-hmm. That was all right. I'm gonna not turn that way for a little bit and hope. Yeah. I hope my back isn't hurt. It's probably getting older, man. I hope I'm not dying. I'm sure you're okay. Oh, I mean you are. We all are. We are all dying slowly. Slowly. But yeah, back pain. Not fun. So uh what do you guys got? Go ahead, Robert. Uh well, we kind of already touched but on this a little bit, like the game not being played yesterday, the Yankees Guardians game. But like in addition to that too, like no updates were given for like four hours, and gates there opened like at five o'clock, and they weren't told. I took a five hour energy, expecting it to be like a nine o'clock start, and I was like, "Well, strap in, we're gonna be up all night." And then when they're like, "By the way, we postponed it," like, "Well, now I'm wired. Now what do I do?" Yeah, like that sucks for fans. Like it'd be who were there, and then so we can't make it to the next day. Like. You know, the Yankee Stadium, they don't care. They they sold concessions and stuff while people were waiting, but no updates for like four hours. That was weird. Yeah, the players didn't have updates either. Like the players were still warming up, expecting to play. And then they're like, yeah, we're not doing that. Yeah, I just remember seeing at some point, because it was supposed to be what, a six something start. Mm-hmm. And they're like, we'll, we'll, we'll update you at, at se- around seven. Around seven, we're going to update you. And like seven thirty, they were like, "Ah, we still got nothing. Just, just hang around. We'll let you know." They're still planning on proceeding with the game tonight. And then by like eight o'clock, they're like, "All right, we're gonna try." By like nine thirty, I think they said nine. We're gonna try nine o'clock, nine nine fifteen, nine thirty, somewhere in there. We're gonna try. And then that came around, and then they were just like, "We'll wait another twenty minutes," and then they canceled it. And you're like, "Well, what the fuck?" Dude, and can you imagine? Like, I would have been so pissed. If it was a nine thirty game, and they lost. Like, it goes. Veteran like, Manfred was asleep by eight thirty. He knew it wasn't going to happen. AM. Yeah, that might have been if if the fix was in, like you say. Because he gave the order. There like, shouldn't be rainouts in baseball anymore. I feel like we we should, we moved past that. Like, even if you don't have a dome stadium, like, do we not have tarps? Like, we could put tarps over big fields. Like, just I don't understand how it's that hard. I don't well, know don't, the logistics, they, but just put a giant ass fucking tarp, okay? Like they you don't can tarp make the that. outfield because it drains well enough. It's the infield that's important to keep dry. Right. Just put a tarp there. They did. No, but like over the stadium. Like have you mean a roof. A tarp. You don't even have to put a, build a roof because it every well, it's gonna cost me. Nope, buy a giant tarp. Sorry. Rain comes Very sideways to sometimes too. But it's not as much rain. It's less rain, and that's what really matters. That's why you got to have a retractable roof like Houston. We're smarter than everyone. No, I mean, it's a pretty cool thing to have. Yeah. But, yeah, that sucks, Robert. just a dome stadium. Yeah. That's a solid not cool. <laughs> also, I don't like Bob cool. Costas. You don't like Bob Costas? Oh, wow, really? Who yeah. called that? I, I haven't um, watched any of the games, but, like, I've seen, like, clips and highlights, and I – would hear something like who the heck is this guy who's so who sounds so monotone he's 
Bob fucking Costas, dude. He's a I, I've, treasure. I've never heard him before. He was another one of those guys that feigned just absolute outrage at the Astros and just completely ignored every other report where all the players like across the league were going, yeah, dude, they weren't the only ones doing this. And he just ignored every one of those who were like, yeah, Astros. Yeah. yeah I, I, reprehensible cheating. And people I, were like, yeah, dude, <laughs> there's other people too. And he was just like, oh, look, a bird. There's a bird over there. I had no idea who he was until like a week ago. You had no idea who Bob Cox was? No idea. He's mm-hmm. one of the most famous baseball yeah. like pundits of all time. Never heard of him. Jesus and Beth. Well, like... you know what? In Robert's defense, Bob Costas isn't on Houston radio, so. Yeah. But people also, yeah, right? And that's like apparently what every Astros fan thinks should be calling every play-by-play of every game. But um, Which is also dumb. I don't agree with that either. The, I mean, maybe the our games. I wouldn't mind the local guys doing local games, but like, you know, or like if you could also watch your local feed, I like it better that it's like the national games, you get national broadcasters, all this shit. That way, you know, you don't have five different fucking feeds going. And of course they wouldn't do that anyway, because then it's taking money away from what they're pushing, but maybe like one game, a series you do do like Apple does one game, a series you take Blummer and then you take one guy from the other booth and that's, who's calling it. Or just have the I same think that would be the fun. booth for all of the games. I think that makes more sense for a network to do. But um, I think it would be fun if one game of series they took one guy from each side and like because eventually those two guys are gonna get into it. And that's gonna make great TV. Or they won't. Oh, your pitcher sucks. He just gave up a 450 foot bomb, huh? Maybe you should have been talking about that. I don't think shit they the talk like inning. that to each other. Eventually it would happen. I'm not no, saying. Once a year, like- I'm saying once in 15 years, the two guys would get into it. At some yeah, maybe. point, I just wanted to happen once in the history of it. Because as much as much shit as people talk about the Apple TV broadcast, when they have Blum and like the other, because it's always Blummer they send because he's awesome, and then they'll have one person from the other team. I always find those wildly entertaining. I just feel like I will. I, I it's one of my most correct takes ever that people were going to quickly turn on Bob Costas because, like, he said uh, he called J- Shane Bieber Justin Bieber the other day, and everybody lost their fucking minds. He's like, dude, be, like, name another Bieber. Like, there's, there's, there's Justin Bieber, okay? But most people know of Justin Bieber over Shane Bieber. Like, yeah, you, you shouldn't have said that. But like, how many times do people call the fucking Guardians the Indians this series? Like a bunch, all season. Oh. Like, it's like if, if he called him Justin Bieber 14 times in a row, then yeah, okay, that's weird. But like having a mishap, like chill out a little bit. If Blummer called somebody by the wrong name, you'd be like, oh, okay, hey, man, it happens, bro. But it's like because you're like, who the fuck is this guy that's not rooting for my team? Dude, I call people that I work with the wrong name all the time. So I'll never get on people for that type of shit. Like you say the wrong Don't name, it Bob Costas. But like, yeah, and also he's old as fuck. Like, leave him alone. Like, I, I'm 32 yeah, and I use the wrong name all the time for people. When I'm in my 60s, if people are like, dude, you said the wrong name. I'd be like, dude, I'm lucky I can still speak. Okay? Like, just let it yeah. go. You knew what I was saying. Just chill out. Except right? if it's my friends, I will correct them and make fun of them every single time. Because that's what friends well, yeah, do. Yeah, that's what friends do. Yeah. So Robert hates Bob Costas. Yeah. And I've only seen, like, or heard his voice, for like, I don't know. Two, well, three really minutes. You're really gonna hate him by this weekend. You're really gonna hate him. Pat, what's your not cool? So my not cool is I just had a monumentally shit bag of a Sunday. Uh, started out noon game. Packers play the Jets. You know that's a get right game. Uh, no, Packers aren't good. They're really not good right now. Uh, either DJ Moore or Clay's Chapel is who it looks like Chase the Packers Claypool. are gonna try. Yeah. Got to try and trade for because we need it because our wide receivers can't get any separation whatsoever against anybody. So we just can't throw the ball. And then also Matt LaFleur just likes to abandon the run in the second half. The Packers coach. Oh, yeah. Or, 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 or when he does decide to run, it's strictly out of shotgun. He doesn't get any eye formation or anything like that. Go. So uh, yeah, overall, we're just not a good team right now. We lose the jets. That was painful enough. Then the uh, Jags who I had plus two and a half this week. Uh, we're covering, 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 covering all game. 
and then decide late in the game to just let Matt Ryan through a 40 yard touchdown down the sideline with 14 seconds left. Fucking ruined that. That sucked. And then that night, my grandfather died. So it was a pretty shitty fucking Sunday for me. Woke up you, Monday yeah, morning. Like it was like two things. You're like, yeah, I get. Oh, now that's a real one. Yeah, yeah okay. and then and then a real one. Yeah, I woke up Monday morning. I'm fucking half asleep. My sister just comes to my room and goes, yeah, Pepe died last night. I was like, great. That's fucking perfect. I got no grandparents left now. They're all dead. Sorry, man. All of them. Yeah. And, and I mean, he, he was 94. He lived a really good, really long life. We've kind of known that over the last year, at some point, this was coming. But we put him in. Uh, he had he was having some like hip problems and like couldn't stand up a couple days ago. So we brought him to the hospital and they put him in hospice care. And we're like, you know, there's not really a lot yeah. to be done at this point. But it, two days, two days later, he's gone. It happened really fucking fast. And it sucked. Call your grandparents if you can. I kept putting it off for like the last couple of weeks just because, you know, he's also 94. He can't really hear on the phone. There's not really much of a conversation you were to have just because he can't hear anything. Mm-hmm. So you just, you just got to repeat yourself like nine times. And then he goes, ah, I think this is what you said. And it wasn't what you said. So that was always pretty funny, though. That was a, that was a fun part of it. You're just like, all right, Pepe, you tried. I tried to. I'm screaming into my phone. But yeah, not a not a great weekend for me, you know. No, not at all. Yeah, peace and peace, so buddy. I'm sorry. Man. And uh, yeah, I'm sure he's having a worse time of it now because now he's up in fucking heaven. My grandmother's cheating and cards kicking his ass again. So what are you I would gonna say do? He's happy. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was, I'm sure he is. Yeah, but still can't win any card games even in heaven. Just getting cheated against. But also more food, which is. About the More only food. thing he had left at the end. He got uh, he got three eggs Benedict like a month ago, and uh, that's all he talked about for like two and a half weeks was eggs Benedict. Man loved his food. That's what's that. That's R.I.P. Oh. Yeah. R.I.P. Rainy Dion. R.I.P. Moment of silence, everybody. Pause this right now. And now you can unpause. Okay. Okay. There you go. And now you can unpause. Yeah. I, I had a feeling that I actually, I loved that for a second there. Cause I was just bitching football, bitching football. And then I was like, and my grandfather died. Both your faces were like, sorry, what was that? Who? What? Yeah. <laughs> I, I really buried the lead on that one. I didn't tell yeah, you did. just so everyone you knows. Did. I didn't, I didn't tell either one of them about it either. I was like, this is going to be fun for me. Yeah. We were, unaware. <laughs> we were absolutely out of where. Um, so those are the, our not cools this week uh moving on let's get to the answer segment that's where you get to ask us anything you want throw any ideas our way if it's a drunk or high thought ask away if you want relationship advice ask away we do like it when people ask us to power rank things so give us some stuff to power rank that'll be a lot of fun um hit us up on twitter at pass the gray pod use the hashtag ptg answers to uh ask to make sure you use that pt that that hashtag ptg answers or else uh we won't be able to find it uh sometimes you ask us questions and it just falls like like in, into the queue but like when you use hashtag ptg answers we can click that and search through all the questions people have asked us you could also go to answers at passagreypod.com if you want to email it to us or just go to our website passagreypod.com and reach out contact us and you can ask us those but we do prefer twitter that's what we check the most although i did have some email questions for this week but um the answer segment brought to you this week by the gravy gambles show which um is gonna come back this week is gonna come back this week even though we forgot about it mm-hmm. uh, gravy gambles with me and pat it used to be the ptg picks segment um pat and i picked three games against the spread or over under each week and try and see who has the best score at the end of the week. We put a new episode out every Friday at 1 30 PM central time on our YouTube channel, pass great podcast on YouTube. You should be subscribed to that already. If you're not, if you are not pause right now and just subscribe and then read it. Um, and then uh, we'll also post it to our Facebook page and our Instagram as well at pass great pod on, on that. And then uh, it's also up on, Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. We re-air it. So if you want to go check it out for the Gravy Gambles show, uh, see who me and Pat are picking for you guys in the NFL each week at Pass the Gravy Pod on Twitter and on Instagram where we're going to post it. And then also uh, just 
like our Facebook page and search Pass Gravy Podcast and subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Gravy Gambles Show, every Friday at 1 p.m. Central Time and Sunday at 10 a.m. Central Time. All right, this is the answers segment. Well, if you just answer the question, why don't you just answer the question? Be honest, no big deal. Yeah, answer, answer the question. Don't change the subject, just answer the fucking question. Yep, yep, right. Like, what question do you like? The question. Answers, 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 any questions? Our first question this week, we are recording a little bit early, so we're not going to shit on our podcast son, Skylar Lester, for not submitting one yet. But um, this one is an email. It's from Jessica Levis. And Jessica says, what serial mascot is most likely to be a Russian spy? Mm, Count Chocula. Count Chocula kind of, seems like he's up to something. Because he kind of looks like Boris from... Uh, um, Oh, uh, what was the moose and squirrel? Bull, Rocky and Bullwinkle. Rocky and Bullwinkle. And then there was the Russian spies that were trying to do this shit. Uh, Boris and Natasha. Kind of looks like Boris. Um, I didn't even really think about Count Chocula, honestly. When it I, was the when first was one that popped in my him. head. Um, the one I did think of, and I don't know if he's still the mascot, but remember Cinnamon Toast Crunch? It had like the old guy. I don't know if he was a chef. Or just an old guy, but he had the weird glasses on. Like that guy seems like he could have been radicalized. You know, that guy seems oh. like like we're gonna put him in your cinnamon toast crunch commercials. Bring the kids in, and then boom, we're gonna hit him with that Soviet propaganda. I think his name was Wendell, if I remember correctly. Wendell. Yeah, I don't know. Like ser- amazing cereal, but seems like he could have been uh, could have been a spy. Would have been the perfect place to put him in because. He's gonna reach a lot of a lot of a lot of people that way. I also think the Trix Rabbit, just because like fucking the kids don't want anything to do with him, so he's like gonna go rogue and try and like fight back. So he's probably gonna give the Russians a bunch of information. And then Captain Crunch, just because he's been like, like wow, good. He's been cutting the roof of our mouths for years. So like he could have been trying to work on us from the inside, like for the Soviets this whole time. And he's and he's in the military, so they would try and flip him. Also, I just remember I looked up. Uh, no, I was. I was combining Boris and Natasha together. She was tall and skinny, but Boris was like short and fat. Like he only came up to her hip. So like not count Chocula. Uh, Yeah. I could think Captain Crunch, Captain Crunch maybe makes the most sense then. I don't want to believe that though. I don't either, but like, that's how you get somebody. That's how like, you got to be aware of those people where like, if Captain Crunch is spying on us, we got to be careful. And like, he has been cutting the roofs of our mouths for a very long time. You know who it could be? It could be the Cookie Crisp dog. Cause that dog was a crackhead. And he'd do anything <laughs> for Cookie Crisp. You give him think, some Cookie Crisp, but he'll he's flip. Got, like, he's also like, I'm just not going to say a dog's going to flip on me. You know, too loyal. He may love Cookie Crisp, but I don't think he loves loves Russia more than his country. He doesn't love anything more than Cookie Crisp. And if Russia just keeps giving him Cookie Crisp, because it seems hard for him to get here. It does. It's not as widely available, I believe, anymore. I think the Cinnamon Toast Crunch guy seems sus. Just go look at him. Go look at the Cinnamon Toast Crunch guy. Put a picture of him up here right now, Robert, on the video version. Go, like, Just look at this guy. Tell me that guy doesn't look like he could be like giving info to the Soviets. Mm-hmm. Oh, Cookie Chris wasn't a dog. It was Chip the Wolf. He's a wolf. Mm. Okay. More likely to be a spy, I think, than just a dog. Yeah. The, the trick think... rabbit makes sense because he could be radicalized just because he's like, fuck you kids. I'm going to give all the info to the Russians. What did you what did you think, Robert? Sorry. I think it's easier to hide in a group. So I think it's one of Snap, Crackle, and Pop. That's not a bad answer. Fuck. I just don't want to believe it because they're, they're treats. Not so much their cereal, but they're, they're, they're treats that they have. Yeah, they're that's why you so... don't want to believe, but like one of them can easily hide. And like they got twice or they got three times as many people to like get info. They mix it up. Mm-hmm. Do you know what Captain Crunch's you know what full name is? You know what else snaps, crackles, and pops? Is a bomb. And Russians have those. <laughs> so, something to think about. Mm-hmm. Just trying to connect the dots here. <laughs> yeah. This is going to blow your mind. Together. 
You want to you want to know what Captain Crunch's full name is? Tell me. Horatio, Horatio Magellan Crunch. Oh, dude, he's definitely a fucking spy. No, Horatio's not a spy. No, I right, think, no, I Horatio, think Horatio, no. Horatio Horatio's no. a spy. Chip, I'm I'm gonna stick with Chip the Wolf, the Cookie Crisp Wolf. He's a wolf. He's a wolf. That's a predator. And he's also a crackhead. I think, I think the Russians are going to want it to be a human type mascot. So Captain Crunch is still in play. So is 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 the the cinnamon toast crunch guy and Snap Crackle Pop. I feel like we've like I feel like the wolf is the least likely out of all of those. I mean, wolves can run 35 miles an hour and have a biting capacity of 1,500 pounds. Seems like Russians would want that. But and are they great at relaying a- information? I think so, yes. Crackheads seem unreliable, Dude, though. Wolves are natural predators and hunters. You don't even see them fucking coming, and then, bam, they're on you. Right, but they're, they're supposed to be able to blend in with you and, like, befriend you and then turn on you. Like give your information and snap, crackle, and pop. They give you delicious treats all the time. And then they go tell the Russians what you tell them when you're like, hey, thanks for the Rice Krispie treats. Here's some fun secrets that I'll give you. Like that makes sense. The cinnamon toast crunch guy, cinnamon toast crunches are, are delightful. So you eat there, you're filling out information on the box. He's probably copying that information and giving it to the Russians. And then I, I, I did Captain Crunch again. Like he's already slightly hurting us with with hurting the roofs of our mouths. Like I could see him also like taking the information off the back of the box that we put on there and um and, and giving it to the Russians. I'm gonna go snap crackle pop just to agree with Robert because it makes so much sense that there'd be three of them. Mm-hmm. Well, he said one of the three. Or all three. Or all three. But he radicalized one of them. He, they could get the info from the other two, anyways. Yeah, no, I don't think it would be the wolf. I'm with Alex. On I don't that think one. it would. I don't think he's it would be crackle because he seems like he'd be crackling, and so like he's gonna he's gonna crack and tell him. So it's not him. Snap seems like he might snap. I think it's pop. I think because of the bombs, probably, right? Because of the bombs, which Russia also has. They pop. They yeah. pop. It's right there. Signs have been there the whole time. So I think Pop is uh, the most likely serial mascot to be a spy. Great question. Great question. I don't think Jessica has written in before, but fantastic first question. If uh, if indeed that was your I mean, question. Also, Sneaky, a good answer would be the Honey Nut Cheerios B. Because he's a B. Very small. Can get in and out of places. Yeah, but he's too worried about like our cholesterol and stuff. So it's like he's trying to help us. Could be a front. That's all I'm saying. It could be. It could be. I'm going to go with Pop, though. I'm going to go with Pop. I respect um, the answer. What do we got next? Kenya Valdez at Kenyatta Mandata says, power rank these kinds of sex. Ooh. Ooh. Um, okay. We do like power ranking things. So she gives us these choices for for our power rankings. Um, these kinds of sex. First time sex, one night stand sex, makeup sex, Netflix and chill sex, and baby making sex. Who wants to go first? Why not? Um, we'll go number one, baby making. Just the, mm, just, the, just, just, the, just the intentive cream pie is. Not that I have had that one, but you have to imagine that you're just like, yep, no con, well, no birth know, control. This yeah. is exciting. This is exciting. We'll go there. One, two. <sighs> Makeup, because there's still a little bit of anger there. Little fur, okay. <laughs> little ferociousness, a okay. little bit. Uh, three. Let's see. Um, first time, because you don't know it's bad. It's good. It's good for you. Still not going to be the okay. best one, but it's hey, first time. It's exciting and it feels great. All right. It's awesome for eight seconds. Uh, <laughs> uh, then we'll go, uh, Netflix chill. It's comfortable. Last one, one night stand. Cause you there's no connection women. there. There's no connection there. Yeah. And you respect women. Yeah. You don't oh, use no I, objects. Oh no. They're more, uh, they would be using me. 
Right, but like also like we respect women, so like that's why I want to stand for the bar. I respect women so much. I know that they have the ability to do the same. Um, I don't really have those as my five. My my, uh, I'm gonna go one is makeup, just because passion and anger. It seems to. Um, <laughs> I, mean, I don't fight a lot, so I don't have a lot of that. But um, so that would be one. The number two is Netflix and chill, because like you're watching a show. And like, also, it's like when you want to Netflix and chill, it's like we know what's going on. Maybe there's snacks involved first. It's fun for everybody. It's a full experience, you know. Um, no, it's like kind of like a no pressure sitch. Um, number three, I'm gonna go one night stand, but I still do respect women, just because you're like, I don't know if this doesn't go well. Like, you have to have like the anxiety afterwards. Like, did that go well? It's a one night thing. I'm out. You know um number four is you hope you don't get a call in a couple months that too uh well there's ways you can you can prevent that but um number uh four i'm gonna go with first time just because you're nervous like you don't know what's going on you're worried about like let me make sure this 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 goes well and it never will but like you may not know that it doesn't but like you're nervous about it you're like i fucking killed that and you're like no you didn't no, um, and then I'm gonna go last is baby making sex because like yeah it's like yeah you get like there's no goalie no birth control whatever like you just said <laughs> but like I also feel like the people that are trying to make babies like when you're trying to get them like a baby making schedule like it is more of a chore it's like hey and, like you have to be like is she ovulating we're doing like there's people that get on like schedules and that seems like it's a chore as yeah, but opposed that's a, to like that's a pretty sick chore no, it's a pretty sick chore, but it's like, is it as fun if it's like scheduled in? I mean, it's always, it's like pizza. It's like pizza. It's always tight, no matter what. Like if it's good, if it's, if it's good, it's awesome. If it's not good, it's still awesome. But like, <laughs> I feel like it's more of like an obligation and more of like, a, like, like just part of a schedule. So like not as cool. Let me put this for you in hockey terms. Do you enjoy an empty net goal? Any more than a regular I one? Always do. Or any, any, any less than a regular one? No, still awesome. Right, but just like, I don't want it to be a chore. So I'm going to go make up Netflix and chill one night, first time in baby making. I can't Robert. wait until you tell me at some point, hey, me and Emma are trying, and I get to text her, hey, don't be a chore. <laughs> she would never be. <laughs> I was just like, fuck. He's but it is also funny when it's like, yeah, we're trying. It's like, we're just having a lot of unprotected sex. Like, that's what you just told me. <laughs> well, there, was, there was some female comedian that I saw years ago. And she said, every time one of my friends says, me and my husband are trying, all I hear is, you're telling me you're letting him do big cums in your pussy. <laughs> <laughs> and that's I all know. I that's all I will ever think about anytime anyone's like, we're trying for a baby. I'm like, oh, you're full. You're getting loaded up. <laughs> I'm not sure that I want to go which, anymore. Which, which, by the way, say that to a woman when they say they're trying. Don't. They don't take it well. Don't say that. Um, Robert, what are your power rankings? You know what? I'm going to go one night stand as number one. Whoa! Just scandalous. There's no dirty like, bird. There's no like string it's, it's strings attached. It's just you know you're just getting it on. Thanks for the memories. Like, Who oh, knew Robert was a hit it and quit it kind of guy? I didn't. So many surprises that we learned on this podcast. Then I'm going to go with makeup sex as number two. Okay. What, what Pat said, anger and something? Res- anger is like a slight bit of resentment too, but it's like. Right. And ferocity. Getting what you want. Then I'm going to go Netflix and chill. The comfortableness. So that was nice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, first time. And then baby make. Guess I'm the only one here that wants a family. Jesus Christ. So you just. Yeah, we pretty much. You had very similar ones to me, except you had white one night in front. I don't hate. I don't hate yours. I think Pat was far off. Pat was far off. Pat to each their off. own. Clearly. Pat was we don't king shame here. You're, you're, I'm not king shaming. It's your I mean, preference. I'm just saying I don't like. We don't. We don't. We don't prefer like shame either. I think I have better preferences. Is what I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. What now? I don't now know. I got nothing for that. We, nobody knows. Nobody knows what we do here. All right. Power ranking. All right. Sex. K 
keep sending us things to power rank i like that but also send us regular answers questions but also send us power ranking things because it's a lot of fun um danielle weston at danny underscore weston writes Ooh. in and says you know be a good one next week what sorry this just popped in my head i gotta say it out loud so i don't forget it somebody actually send this to us and give us options uh different boners power rank what what I boners are the best those. ones that would be fun morning wood random boner in the middle of class like just it's, throw us a bunch of them you can give us more than five and we'll just power rank our top five but random like types of boners great that'd be fun i, don't want, to do that. Oh, dude, I want josh I, naylor I, josh naylor now they just do the baby rock to him every time that's not that was dumb on his part i'm sorry yeah to interrupt everything but it's like this is really backfiring right now buddy i just want to hear robert talk about his boners See, I don't want to make Robert keep doing that. Like, I was nervous to put the sex one in this week, but I was like, duty calls sometimes, you know? Yeah, I don't think I'd do that one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, our next one is from Danielle Weston, at Danny underscore Weston on Twitter, and she says, is a chili dog a sandwich or a taco? You always get the hot dog. Is a hot dog a sandwich? Is a chili dog a sandwich or a taco? I think it's a taco. It's not a taco. It's not in a tortilla. It doesn't always have to be in a tortilla. It's like a bread. Really? It's just bread. It's a bread tortilla. It, no, the tacos are in tortillas. Mm-hmm. Wow. It's got all the, it's got the sauce on and stuff. It's, it's more taco y than a sandwich. The way that you eat it. Like, yeah, I think it's, it's zero. I think it's zero percent taco, taco, though. It's zero percent taco it's because taco it does not over. It does not have, it does not have the defining characteristic of a taco in that is that it would be in a tortilla exactly I always and the chili felt... the chili makes it like a sloppy joe and the sloppy joe is a sandwich there you go sloppy there joe you go it's fair it's a fair that's actually a good argument that robert brings not pat i but actually I, I hate i hate this question because i was talking about hot dogs with somebody yesterday and i want hot dogs so goddamn bad right now i do too like so unbelievably bad i want to make and I was like, oh, I can go to James Cody Island. There's one not far from me. Nope, that one got closed Dude, they down. Closed. After, they closed dude, a lot of them. It was there for like 20 years on Mason Road. Gone now. RIP. We have one by me, and it's still open. I checked because I heard that they were all closing. That was a lie. That was a lie. Um, I was going to say it was more of a taco, but I feel like I've been out of this. So sorry, Danielle. Um, I, guess, I guess sandwich it is. Based on a split decision. Um, Luke Soin writes in with our next one. He says, if you're trying to get a game of hot potato going with the boys, but no one has a potato, what is the best potato substitute you could use in a pinch? <laughs> just like I just like a, a game of hot potato with the boys. <laughs> hey, fellas, you want to play some hot potato? Why well, don't I have any potatoes? The answer is a dildo. That's not the answer. Oh, no. that's true. Dude, okay, have you ever played catch with a dildo with the boys? It's hilarious. That's not the first thing I want to go with, though. But but it's For funny sure. because because then you're going to get rid of it fast, but also people are going to try and surprise their friends and try and hit them with it so they get like a little mushroom stamp across their cheek. Trust me, hot potato with a dildo, that's the answer. I don't think that's the right answer. I, w- I went more like food-based. Because you're substituting potatoes. So I was like, what would be a better potato substitute? And if you're really playing hot potato with like a baked potato in foil that's hot, something that I think could easily mimic that would be corn. An ear of awesome. corn that you've thrown on the grill with you could wrap it in the in the the aluminum foil. That's hot. That's hot. Hot elote. It's a little hot why, elote over there, you know. If that's the criteria you're going for, why wouldn't you just use a sweet potato? Well, because it's a potato. If you didn't have potato, I was assuming all potatoes were off the table at this point. I mean, I was it's not. Exercise. Okay, then I um, won't call it a sweet I potato. Mean, we'll call it, we'll use a yam then. No, too close. So that's actually I, I wrote, what it is. I wrote corn and foil and all hot was my first one. And then I also put some other options would be an apple, an eggplant. So that's kind of along your dildo line if you want to go with that. Uh, Mm -hmm. apple eggplant onion and then one of those little pumpkins not the big pumpkins but like the little ones you take to school that seems small enough to toss you can probably heat Uh, it up a gourd a gourd is isn't that a small pumpkin A gourd is more of like it's like a weird shaped pumpkin like i'm talking those like they're just like a little baby pumpkin it's like it fits in the palm of your hand 
I swear there's Robert, a name for them. Did you have any suggestions? What about like uh, one of those zucchinis that people like grow to be like three feet long? Okay. I can see that. I mean, I think like a potato is like a good size. And I thought mm. like corn is kind of potato ish size. I'm okay with And then that. also like that. wrapping it in the foil would make it like you wouldn't like you wouldn't be like this is weird that corn was wrapped in foil. Because I've seen that before. I think an onion would be good, bulky, bulky enough. But like if you're trying to truly do hot potato with the boys, just get a game going. <laughs> Whatever the next past the gravy event is, we need to just remember to bring a hot potato. <laughs> and just like hot potato just toss it out of it. What the that would be great every, every so often we just like sneak out we go hot potato and throw one out into the crowd they just gotta keep it going just keep, yeah. the, keep the potato going we're just throwing hot objects at people they're like what the fuck hot potato. Luke's just ready. like I'm trying, trying to get some hot potato with the boys uh, um, you guys got any substitutes though reminds me of like uh, on the sandlot where they lose the ball and so they're trying to go to the store to get another ball but they don't or did they not have the money for the ball whatever it was and they asked you to get the babe ruth ball it's yep. like shit we're all at potatoes i think my dad might have some corn let's go let's go in his garden <laughs> i'm gonna i'm i'm sticking with my answer of dildo because i think it would be the most fun alternative again not fun but just best substitute um i think and i food, think it would also be food the best related because- What's the point food of hot related, potato? Which a dildo is not. What's the point of hot potato? To have fun. Um, What's the most fun object to throw around holding, with your friends? No, dildo. to not be the one holding the potato. Yeah, and that's not hot potato, and I think and you don't want to be the one corn. holding a dildo. Pass not hot corn makes more sense. Hot to dildo. No. Yes, you can say no all you want. Mine is the correct answer. You just refuse to accept it because you got a little, you got a smooth brain. You know, I got a bunch Robert of agreed with me. You got a smooth brain. Robert well, agreed Robert, with me. Robert also doesn't want to power rank boners, so this is just not a subject he wants to be on. That's why he Robert agreed with you. Agreed with me, and like the chili dog being a standard trope for a taco, where I agreed, with, I went with you guys when I was outvoted. You also have to give us that same courtesy. Respect, please. Please show some respect. Okay. Okay. Pat, please show some okay. I guess some class. Porn. Yeah. Not very classy. You'd be a real class police right now. Um, all right. Last one we got for this week is from Brandon Whitehead at Brando Whitehead on Twitter. And he says, Are we working to live or living to work? I'm working to live. <laughs> like, if I, like, how many people, honestly, you could say right now, if you woke up tomorrow morning, you had a billion dollars in your account, would you still go to work? No. Alex but, might. You got a sweet but, fucking job. But you also like live to work so you can. I feel like we're more living to work. Not right we're now. Alive, but you got to go to work. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I wanna live it, to living to work means like you can't wait to wake up. You want to go to work. You want to be there. If I had a couple hundred mil in the bank account right now, I would not. Work, be working this job if you're not retired or really really rich i would say you are living to work though because you have to work so you don't get me wrong living and existing like like it's like to me it's like that's what the weekends are it's like you get two days and then boom all right go back to work oh that's like, sick that's you have weekends lot... i don't have that that's sick of you dope well but people that do people that do no do like i mean i don't get me wrong i would still hang out at my job i would hang out at the bar drink bullshit with people but i want to be there 50 hours a week like fuck that so living or working i would do this working to live is what this is what i would do full time okay then i'll decide with you guys we're working to live then yeah that was i'm confused still but i get it's a very common saying i don't understand how you still haven't grasped it (laughs) i'm working for the weekend Everybody's working we for go. the weekend. So yeah, that's it. At Pass Great Pod, use the hashtag PTG Answers if you would like to have yours read on another podcast coming up. Bob, I hope you guys enjoyed the early release of the pod. Uh, please. 
go subscribe to our YouTube channel, search Pass Gary Podcast on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. We would really appreciate that. Then also give us a five-star review on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, wherever you listen to podcasts. You can roast us in the reviews. Just give us the five-star review, and then you can say whatever you want. We just need the five stars to keep showing up higher in the uh, the ratings, and uh, we really appreciate your help. And also, if you would share us with a friend, that would mean the world to us because that is how we grow the Gravy Gang. Uh, appreciate anybody that's going to take their time out of their week to uh, to be at the Rod Ryan Show Golf Tournament, be associated with the Gravy Hole that will be there. Shout out to uh, our buddy Bro Brad. He uh, funded the Gravy Hole again. So uh, he's awesome. Brett Brandon, he was kind of running the whole show for it. And uh, Greg McGee has also helped out a lot with that as well. So shout out to everybody that's, that's given the time uh, to help us out with the golf tournament in advance when we haven't done the golf tournament but just yet, but we know we're going to be doing that tomorrow. And just early shout out to all of you guys. Um, please share us with a friend. Uh, continue just liking our shit. Just hit that like button and, uh, and help us out and share us with a friend. Have a great rest of your week. Check out, check out Robert's podcast. Robert does recent study suggests with sam new episodes every monday you can listen to it wherever you're listening to this very podcast check out gravy gambles at 1 30 this friday afternoon and then uh 10 a.m on sunday morning get all your nfl picks from me and pat uh have a great rest of your week go giants and until we talk to you guys next time pass the gravy yeah bitches Shorty had the apple bottom jeans, boots with the fur. The whole club was looking at her. <laughs>